Action on the boat! <laughs> This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. God damn it, Ryan, I am pissed. Yeah, you and me both. We are going to General Motors right now. <laughs> Let's go. I couldn't be more mad. <laughs> <laughs> We're at GM Proving Grounds, just snooping around, looking for prototypes. We've already seen some really cool stuff around. Um, Blazer SS, some other things as well. Um, really looking for an Escalade IQ. But look at all this. They got the old Clipper Creeks back here. GM EV charge parking. Old Clipper Creeks. This is, we've seen this, we've been to three GM facilities just snooping around. They all got these old Clipper Creeks around. So this must have been a huge charging installation back when maybe Volt came out, I would We're think. over here where we found an I-Pace and a whole bunch of cars. I think this must be their test car area. That might be a benchmarking vehicle. But this is a, um, you said AC charge and DC discharge Ultium yes. unit. So it's a bi-directional charger. Looks like it. I believe that's the first one we've seen in the wild right there. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, and it's locked at the moment, right? Looks so, like it is. Yeah, can't use anything. But it's gotta be a CCS plug and that must be how they do bi-directional charge testing. That's pretty cool. Okay, this is actually kind of cool. This is, we're gonna maybe have a couple clips around the proving grounds. We've seen so many prototypes, yeah. but take a look at this road. We're on a public road right here, but that's part of the proving grounds. They must just send it up and down there or do super cruise testing or, I mean, this has to be one of the largest automotive testing facilities ever because we just drove for minutes on end, five minutes, something yeah. like that. And you said that was the short side. Yeah, three miles was the short side. Wow. This is so cool. So we're just gonna maybe do a whole perimeter loop and then we'll head over and complain to Mary about what we're pissed off about. Yeah. Well, while we're driving in the Bolt on our way over to GM headquarters, Ryan, you are a previous Bolt owner. You've done thousands of miles in your Bolt EV and we're currently driving the Bolt EUV. So I thought we'd give a little bit of a, re a review of the EUV since I, the last time I drove this was on the launch, but it was a maxed out trim with Super Cruise. This is a base, no option EUV. Yep. What's your impression coming from a Bolt EV and then afterwards compare it to your new Tesla that you just got? Absolutely. So uh, there's, of course, a ton very familiar. Uh, like all the uh, user interface is very similar. Uh, working with the screen is very similar. Uh, and uh, just like, the general driving, the, the power, steering, a lot of that stuff is very similar uh, to how it was six years ago uh, in the car that I had. Um, there are some noticeable improvements. I think the steering wheel is a bit nicer. This whole center stack looks way better than in the original. Um, and the, the Bolt uh, regular hatch has also been updated. That's right, yeah, they've uh, both been updated. They only offer the base trim in the Bolt hatch now. Really? Where Yeah, where you had the Premier. To get anything nice, you have to spec up to the EUV. And so this is sort of comparable to the base bolt because this is a base EUV. Yeah. But you can go up to the Premier and get Super Cruise and the digital mirror and all that stuff. Yeah. So uh, those uh, you cannot get Super Cruise in the regular bolt. I, I think it'd be... Uh, do they offer the 2LT trim still? I don't, I don't think... Oh, maybe they do 1LT, 2LT. Yeah. I, I, th I, I think don't it'd know. it'd be worthwhile to do that if it's still available, which gives you... Uh, heated seats, leather, just some nice stuff. Uh, and it's not that expensive from uh, what I remember. Sure. There definitely needs to be more inexpensive electric cars. Yeah, this really does a great job of being a vehicle, getting you from A to B. It's reasonably quiet, reasonably comfortable. There's enough space to put stuff in the back. You can fit people in the rear seats. I don't know if you, you know, want to necessarily drive an uber with this but yeah no rear air vents i think is a non-starter for uber stuff yeah but it's it's still a very nice car and uh, of course it has to be said the the meat and potatoes has not changed one bit uh the range is the same charging is the same uh so yeah there's no real downside over the euv over the regular ev um uh, and i think it's safe to say that you and i are both are pretty big bolt bolt fans yeah I think it fail, fits a, a very specific uh, hole. Like there's, people need a, a cheap EV and not everyone needs, you know, 200 kilowatt charging or going on road trips all the time. So 
this is a really great option. And with uh, federal incentives as well as state incentives, you can get into one of these new at very, very reasonable prices. So we've been driving this car all day. It's now 7.42 p.m. We've pretty much been going from meeting to meeting to the GM Proving Grounds and now into Detroit. And we still have over 50% state of charge. And we've been able to top up when we go to these meetings, which is increasingly becoming popular with level two chargers around. And the range of this car, of the Bolt EUV, seems to be honestly more than what you would need. Yeah, I've, I've always thought that the Bolt has a really good range, especially around town. It's, it's more than you can ever use in a day, at least in my opinion. Uh, once you start piling on the miles, if you want to go three, 400 miles or more in a single day, that's when it really starts to show its, uh, it's limitation, limitation, which is its charging capabilities. And that's, the Bolt has always been, this is a fantastic car at a great price with great range, reasonable tech. It has car play, reasonably good sound system. It's got everything reasonably okay. Uh, pretty good power. Like they're f actually fun to drive. We've been sending it around off ramps and stuff, yeah. uh, full rental car mode. <laughs> uh, but there's always the butt, which is the charging speeds, limited to 50 kilowatts. And that's not the full story. It's it comes off of fifty kilowatts pretty early into the yeah, charging before session. Before you hit fifty percent, right? Yeah, it's so just it's, crazy slow charging. Yeah, uh, you're talking about forty-five minute charging stops minimum. So yeah. So what would be like a ten to eighty percent or zero to eighty percent on this? Is that an hour? Uh, yeah, hour hour ten or so. Yeah, that's pretty it's brutal compared to like Ionic 5 would be 15 minutes, yep. you know, somewhere around there, 10 to 80 and 18 minutes, I believe they are. And so that's probably a less efficient vehicle with less range, but still the recharging times more than make up for it. Yeah. So I think uh, when we factor in price, when we factor in size, capability, and the fact that most people aren't driving on road trips, and you can, if you have to, take the bolts on the road trip. I just met a woman driving from South, uh, from Washington to South Carolina in her bolt on my recent trip, and it was taking her forever, same speed as my Rivian towing, but she was doing it. Yeah, I, I've done plenty of road trips uh, across the whole country in the bolt. It's slow, it's very slow. It's difficult to go, if you're like really hammering it, you can go 600 miles in a day, but it's not fun. Right, sure. That's and you really want to run the battery all the way out. Yeah. So uh, you can do it. I wouldn't recommend it. Sure. And it but all these cars do about, you know, 250 miles on a charge, 230 to 250, which is plenty. It's got a relatively small battery pack. Do you know the the battery pack size? 66 kilowatt. Hours. 66 usable, right? Uh, I believe it's 64 usable. Oh, 64 usable. Okay. But you, uh, so we full charged this bolt last night. It got there in a level two station. It was all great. And so all we're, we're really trying to say is the bolt is one hell of a great value for almost everyone factoring in my friend, Tom just bought a brand new bolt EV. I actually kind of still like the way the EV looks more than the EUV. I'm in the same boat. And, and after all the incentives, it was like $17,000 brand new. Yep. Uh, I, I can't speak to every state, but in Colorado, uh, if you have a gas-powered vehicle, you can get uh, $21,000 of incentives. Really? Yep. Straight off the bolt. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can get 13500 straight off the price and then the 7500 coming the next year. So it's almost a free car. It's basically free. We should get one. <laughs> if it really does work out to be that, it's amazing. So either way, you get, you know, you pay the price of the car, you get the $7,500 tax credit, which you have to carry. Uh, but still, it's an unbelievable new car value. And now that they just announced something really annoying about all of this, we're saying this is a great car. A Bolt is like a car everyone should have in their garage. It's such a great tool. Yeah. We're, and, and GM just got it nailed. The price is perfect. The range is perfect. It's decently okay to drive. Plenty of power. Fully electric, of course. AC and DC charging. Does everything without no need for complaining here, except for the DC charge rate. Right. That's the only issue, which is not going to impact many people. They got it so right. GM pulled a classic GM move. Pulled the plug. And that's what we're going to go into Detroit right now and complain about. There it is. We're coming for you. Got some words to share about 
our precious little bolt here. So right in front of GM headquarters, they have an EVgo charger and it seems to be working. It's charging that Polestar. And there's another one here. Should we go up and plug in the bolt, Ryan? Sure, let's do it. Okay, let's see what it's all about. We are now in front of General Motors headquarters and I've got my EVgo card because I'm a proud EVgo member. And we're starting off, Barb is working. It should be called Mary. Uh, <laughs> maybe that one's Mary, I don't know. But anyway, still waiting for my EVgo named Kyle. As far as I'm aware, there is an EVgo named Kyle, but it's broken, <laughs> fitting. <laughs> We'll tap my EVgo account. Authorizing. Approved. Payment's been authorized. <laughs> oh boy. So the one in front of GM headquarters seemingly works. Um, wow, this is really cool down here. They got a Corvette race car, a whole bunch of stuff. Polestar inside as well. Beautiful. Handshake is still happening. Uh, Ryan? Oh well, wait, contact It's slow. Where is the actual charger? Don't see any of the equipment. Maybe it's Not under, I don't know where they would have put it. We're still waiting for it to connect. Connection successful, took a little while, but we're good. The car started charging, I heard it beep. Hey, look at this. There we go, almost at 400 volts. Oh, the bolt's, uh, oh, 360 volts. Yeah. So the bolt, the bolt is pretty high voltage at oh, least. It's getting the full 150. Yeah, 150 amps, 53 kilowatts, damn, yeah. spicy. 54, wow, Ooh. the full 54, that's, that's not always you get to see that. It's a very <laughs> special day for us. Okay, that's the only downside with ball. Look at this dude with the finger, full sand. Just freaking launched it out of there, that was epic. Okay. We're gonna go inside, see what's going on, and then uh, we got some words. We're gonna go up on one of these parking garages and tell Mary what we really think. Right, this General Motors building is freaking sick. We got a huge display down here. We got NASCAR, except they're turning right. Should be the other way around, so they turn left. We got Cadillac Vs, we got got race cars. Did you just call it a Lee Mans? That's what I said, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Lee Mans race car. <laughs> Those things turn left and right, I heard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got some pickup trucks down there. This is a beautiful freaking building. Let's do some more exploring. We have two yeah. hours to kill before our flight. <laughs> Ryan, we are in the depths of this building. <laughs> we are in the basement? We basically were in the elevator. It wouldn't take us to any floor. And then we just started going down. Some dude got in and we just walked out like we meant to be. We were meant to be here. Look, this is an elevator pit. <laughs> wow. We're not supposed to be here at all. <laughs> this is a low rise elevator. This is amazing. And right over there is Canada. Take a look at all this GM electric apparel. They still have this Project Bolt EV cut out here. No EV1 stuff, but they got everyone in Hummer EV hat. By the way, do you know how many Hummer EVs they made last quarter? It was a ton, right? Yeah, like two. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the exact number, but it was somewhere around there. They even have the cool orange pre-facelift bolt matchbox, or I should say 120th. That's smaller than 118th scale. And then some nice jackets and stuff. And a Hummer EV Camelback Cup. Great branding here. Let's go get to the meat of this story and tell everyone what we're upset about. Yep. Will you join me in downtown Detroit, Michigan, right in front of the GM Towers over here, where we're going to scream, Mary, don't end production on the Bolt! <laughs> <laughs> we want the Bolt to stay. You got it so right. It is such an awesome value, especially the non-EUV in base trim. It's finally an electric car that a whole different group of people can afford. And honestly, as soon as this is cut, the next cheapest EV in production is the Lyric from GM. Right? Wow. Because Blazer is taking a while, Equinox is gonna take a while, and the Equinox will take the place of the Bolt. They claim it'll be inexpensive, but it's not gonna be $17,000 after tax credits inexpensive in, in New Jersey or you know maybe in Colorado close to, and what is the MSRP? They're like low 20s. 28 or so starting. Mid 20s, yeah. sure. So under $30,000 by a lot. The Tesla Model 3 LFP is an amazing value. It's so much car for the money, but it's not, this, this is a whole nother category, cheaper, 
the running costs are low. It's it allows so many more people to have a long range electric car at a reasonable price with a good driving experience. And unfortunately, um, they're killing it. I was just sitting in a GM presentation at the Silverado EV event and they were saying, we're selling more bolts than we ever have. There's more interest. The car has been improved. And by the way, we end production at the end of the year. Like, what are you doing, GM? Gosh, they do this all the time. They get such a cool idea, such a good product. And just when they nail it, they pull the plug. So I'm just pissed off about it, to be honest, because it's a car that I've been recommending everyone to buy. After the price cuts, the Bolt was the option. The only reason not to buy a Bolt was if you needed all wheel drive, which most people don't because front wheel drive and snow tires. Ryan, you did it in Colorado. It was totally fine. Never totally had a problem. Fine. And, um, you know, if you needed a long distance road tripper, you can do it if you have time, if you're retired, if you're not on a schedule. Otherwise, yeah, you got to have a Tesla or something to rely on a good network to get from A to B. Those are very like unique use cases that, you know, 90% of EV drivers can do what they need to do in a bolt. And um, Ryan, I'll get your thoughts. <laughs> what what do you think about this bolt ending production we haven't really talked about it much on this channel we've been talking about tycons and lucids and plaids and expensive evs which this is the ev that matters to most consumers what's your impression it's a huge bummer uh there are you know other evs that exist in the 30 ish thousand dollar range but none of them have the combination of being such a solid vehicle with such good range at such a low price it's a huge loss to everyone who would want an EV. I think this is pretty much the perfect second car for a family. If uh, It's just so unfortunate. Right when they get the... The, the pricing formula, was right. Everything was good. It was and so good. The EV is now more aligned with what people want, slightly bigger crossovers, but no more. No more. So, Mary, all the way up there. Don't kill it. <laughs> Keep it alive. People need these things. It really is such a needed place in the market because once this is gone, there's nothing that comes close. You have Mini Cooper SE, which is still over $30,000, only has 100 miles of range. Tesla Model 3, there's a lot of people who don't want to drive a Tesla or- It's also 10 grand more. It's $10,000 more. And the Bolt's a hatchback. And there's just so many, it's a different car at a different price. And honestly, they just nailed it. And so our message to our viewers are buy Bolts now. Get it while you can right now, put your order in. I yes. believe orders stop in August. I'm not 100% on that, but do that as soon as you can. Yes, absolutely. We know our friends at DGDG who gave us the Coda have like 50 new bolts on the lot um, because they're the largest bolt dealer in the world. And so they always have new inventory coming in. So check them out. Definitely go for a bolt if you're shopping for a new car and don't need to take road trips. It's the perfect second car we were talking about. It's just kind of everyone needs one in the driveway yeah my friend tom bought one just as a joke because it was so cheap yeah he's like it's almost a free car it's yeah take a look at your incentives do everything you can to uh to get this car and take advantage of everything that it has to offer yeah insane so we leave you guys now from detroit our plea to mary barra don't kill the bolt and mary actually follows me on twitter like we uh, mary knows us <laughs> So I hope she at least sees the thumbnail for this is like, shit, you know what? Those guys, Ryan and Kyle, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty great. Anyway, we leave you now from Detroit. We got to fly back to Colorado. Spending time in the Bolt EUV was actually a great reminder to how much fun. We've we're, we've been driving this thing like idiots. It's It's been a blast. Yeah, it's fun to rip it around. Because the, the least of the problems here in Detroit is driving like an idiot around the city. So we've just been doing big burnouts and skids everywhere. And it's been so much fun. It's a robust bust package they're reliable they're no longer catching on fire since they fixed the battery <laughs> thing a lot of the older ones have brand new battery packs like this car is such a good deal yeah it's it's awesome and we're sad that it's uh leaving anyway that's our plea on behalf of the out of spec viewers please don't kill the bolts we'll see you all in another one soon <laughs> bye bye <laughs>